Welcome to Pure Math 030. This is an exercise on vertical stretches about the x-axis. So we have now finished the reflections and um, going to concentrate on the stretch factors, vertical stretches and horizontal stretches. And this will cover the basics for vertical. And it's specifically about the x-axis. And the x-axis has an equation y is equal to 0. We will look at other stretches as well, but this is the first. So if you were to consider the following, three graphs. First off, y1 is equal to the absolute value of x. y2 is equal to 2 times absolute value x. y3 is equal to 1 half times absolute value of x. And I'll bring up all three on the graph. You can put these on your calculator as well. You've seen the absolute value symbol. And uh, you can compare these three. You'll get something like this. So you can see that they are generally the same graph, same type of shape, but they have a different steepness or flatness to them. And if you were to look at the top one, the vertical, this would indicate the two in front, would indicate a vertical stretch by a factor of two about the x-axis, or y equals zero. And it's because we have that 2 in front of the equation. That's what's doing it. So this graph has been pulled away from the x-axis by a factor of 2. So it becomes a narrower graph in this case. And then the other graph at the bottom, y is equal to 0.5, or 1 half absolute value of x. Relative to the original curve, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 half about y is equal to 0 or the x-axis. So this graph has been pulled closer to the x-axis. Now it's interesting because in your workbooks they occasionally refer to compressions or expansions and those are good technical terms but nowadays in 30 they call everything a stretch. So even though you're moving it closer to the x-axis you're not really stretching the graph in the way people think of it normally. It still is considered a stretch factor. So even though the graph is getting closer to the x-axis, we still call it a stretch. So let's take a look at a few other graphs, and let's describe them. Now, I'm not going to graph all of them, but um, I will either graph or just simply indicate what has happened to it. So for this one, y is equal to 3 square root of x relative to y is equal to the square root of x. Well, let's look at the graphs. y equals square root x is the bottom one. y equals 3 root x is the top one. So you can see that this 3 square root x has been pulled away from the x-axis. So we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 about y equals 0. And that's what that 3 did. What might interest you about these curves is the nature of the effect of that 3 and what, what it, uh, how it actually is changing the graph. So I'm going to look at a, at a point on the original curve, y is equal to the square root of x, 4 comma 2, and that point does lie in the curve. And this probably won't surprise you, but on the transformed curve, that point becomes 4 comma 6. So the x coordinate is unchanged but the y coordinate is multiplied by 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. So you could say that 4 comma 2 is transformed into 4 comma 6. And every point on the original curve would have that effect. The x coordinate is unchanged, but the y coordinate is multiplied by 3. Now I'm going to change that just a bit, or be a little bit more precise. What's really happening, even though it appeared to be just multiplying by 3, is the vertical distance from the stretch line was multiplied by 3. So in effect, you just multiplied by 3, the, the y coordinate. But in actual fact, it's the distance from the stretch line that got tripled. And this is going to come into play when we start stretching around other lines besides the x and the y axis. 
Now let's describe a couple more. I'm not going to bother graphing these. This is an exponential function, y is equal to 5 to the x, and we want to describe y is equal to 2 thirds times 5 to the x. Now remember with exponential functions, they always have a base, in this case 5. So that is not a transformation, a stretch, or anything else. What is a stretch is that 2 thirds. So this is a vertical stretch by 2 thirds about the x-axis. So any time the stretch factor is less than 1, it actually is technically a compression. But we will call it a stretch anyways. So the graph would therefore be closer to the x-axis, being pulled towards it slightly. And every y-coordinate would be multiplied by 2 thirds. Here's a more interesting one, a little more complicated. Negative y over 2 is equal to f at x plus 3 relative to y equal f at x. So this is any function y equal f at x. And I'm going to clean this one up a little bit. So if I multiply by 2 to both sides to clear that denominator and then divide by the negative 1, you get y is equal to negative 2 f at x plus 3. So we actually have more than one transformation going on, so I'm sneaking a few of these in. That negative, as you have seen before, is a reflection in the x-axis. The 2 is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 about x-axis. So I'm, you can see I'm cheating a little bit now. Instead of saying by a factor, I just go times 2, and that's acceptable. So every y-coordinate is doubled. And then we have a horizontal translation of three units to the left. So three transformations on this graph. And it required a little bit of work to get it into an understandable form. Now here's the general thing. In general, given y equal f at x, y equal a f at x, or y over a equal f at x indicates a vertical stretch, so Vs is shorthand for vertical stretch, by a factor of A about the x-axis. The letter we use typically is A. Notice the two different ways we write it. You can either have it in the y-isolated form, A f at x, or if you have it at the where you don't isolate the y, it would be y over A. But in either case, it's a factor of A. And all points x, y on the original curve will transform into x, comma, a, y on y equal a, f at x. In other words, only the y coordinate is getting the treatment, and we're multiplying it by whatever the a value is. At a substitution level, we are re replacing y with y over a. So you've seen that for each of these descriptions as well. So that's the basic idea. The next lesson will take horizontal stretches, and then we start putting the whole thing together. So thank you for your time.